Welcome to Across the Balkans. I'm Nafis Salatic. Great to have your company. Moldova is facing a series of critical tests this year. First, it's presidential elections and the opening of EU accession talks. Both are coming as the former Soviet state is starting to feel the fallout from the conflict in Ukraine next door. Sandwiched between the two countries is the breakaway region of Transnistria, where Russia maintains more than a thousand troops. Moscow has long been accused of using this potential flashpoint to destabilize and pressure the Moldovan government. The Kremlin has also warned that any use of force on this issue will be considered an attack on Russia. I sat down with Moldova's Prime Minister, Dorin Recean, and began by asking what's the significance of his country's EU bid in the wake of the fighting in Ukraine. It was always a strategic objective of Moldova to become a member of the European uh, Union. And uh, two years ago, uh, we first have been uh, awarded the candidate uh, status. And now this uh, past December, uh, we have uh, been um, uh, awarded the possibility to open the uh, negotiations. So the Council uh, in December decided uh, for uh, opening accession talks to Moldova. This is very important for our people. This is very important for um, our uh, country. And uh, I think that this is important for the whole Europe because a larger Europe means a more peaceful and more secure and more pres prosperous uh, Europe for everyone. Mr. Prime Minister, we waited for a long time in this region for Brussels to again open the negotiation talks for several countries. Um, did we have to wait for the war on European soil, for the Brussels to realize the importance of the EU enlargement for the security of Europe? What is important is that when the opportunity comes, everyone is committed to invest the necessary attention and resources to make it uh, happen. And I think it was uh, uh, the determination of people in Europe, of decision makers, uh, to uh, move forward, and we have to appreciate that. Are Moldova's political actors ready to deliver? Opening accession talks is one thing, but actually what happens afterwards, afterwards is hard work, not for uh, only Moldova, for all the countries. Are political actors in Moldova ready to do that, having in mind all the challenges that you're facing? We, all, we are already delivering by implementing the reforms that are not necessarily very uh, popular. Uh, we are delivering on the reforms that are very difficult to uh, implement, like, for example, anti-corruption, justice, uh, reform, so that are fundamental uh, for ensuring human rights, but are fundamental to build resilient and strong uh, institutions and correspondingly the the uh, the political actors in Moldova are already uh, assuming this responsibility and delivering on it. I um, want to quote here Russia's deputy foreign minister who says that any attempt to resolve one one of the regions in Moldova Transnistria um, by force would mean an attack on Russia. What is the current situation there? And what would be your reaction to his statement? Moldova was always pursuing the peaceful uh, solution of the uh, Transnistrian uh, conflict. Moldova was always advocating for the withdrawal of the uh, Russian troops that are illegally stationed in uh, Transnistria. And Moldova will continue in the future to advocate for a peaceful solution of the uh, Transnistrian uh, conflict. And Moldova will always uh, ask for, uh, for it to be respected so that everyone around respects Moldova and respects Moldovan uh, people. NATO and EU officials often mention Moldova, Georgia, Western Balkan countries as a possible next hotspot in case uh, the war in Ukraine continues and it seems like it will so. Um, and they often call on uh, the countries to speed up uh, their reforms. And they sometimes even warn of possible ethnic conflicts emerging again. Uh, are you worried about the security in your own country if this war continues? And if Russia wants to take the att attention from Ukraine to somewhere else? 
There is peace and security now in Moldova, thanks to Ukraine and to Ukrainian soldiers. And they are uh, ensuring peace and security not only to Moldova, but for, uh, for the other European uh, countries, but also, I think, uh, southern uh, countries to the uh, uh, Russia border. So it is important to uh, support Ukraine to make sure that uh, they um, uh, win this uh, war that Russia actually started against uh, Ukraine and in this way to stop any uh, actor that wants to illegally invade uh, uh, other territories. It is not um, easy for us in this region, um, particularly I, I mean when I talk about Moldova, Ukraine, the Western Balkans countries. Uh, we are multi-ethnic countries with uh, parts of uh, the territory that has many challenges. What would be your message to, in general, officials in the region, for example, to Bosnian officials who are still waiting for the uh, EU Commission to open the negotiation talks? Um, how to unite and leave the ethnic and political differences aside and um, together um, push forward uh, to a EU, possible EU future. I think we all have to work hard and when the opportunity comes, we are uh, ready uh, for it. And it's often that we are working hard, but uh, the uh, things are not uh, happening. So we should continue to work diligently, to work hard, to convince people, to convince voters that this is the right things to do, but also to project uh, hope that uh, uh, once the um, environment is ready, once other politicians are uh, ready in Europe, uh, the, I mean the decision makers, we should be ready too. But for that, we have to work hard and to uh, keep hope. Uh, the EU Parliament elections are approaching in June. Many fear about the outcome um, of those elections, as we've he heard from some of the officials from the EU uh, members that are not quite open towards the EU enlargement. Uh, are you worried what could happen after those elections if the situation in the EU Parliament changes? We have to prepare that, uh, for example, some of the process, uh, processes will be uh, slower they are anyway uh, will be slower as the election uh, in European Parliament are, are going on. But this should not discourage us from doing our, um, our reforms, from doing our uh, uh, homework. Because in the end, these reforms are done to benefit the people of uh, Moldova. Or if we speak in other countries, these reforms are needed uh, for the people of the uh, corresponding countries. And just at the end, you're economists yourself. Um, speaking about the foreign investors, is there a message that you want to send from Moldova? Um, you said the situation over there is peaceful, but from the outside, sometimes when you read the headlines, it doesn't look like that. Uh, indeed, the, the, headline, the headlines are not, are not favoring us, even though, again, Moldova is a peaceful and secure uh, country and offering a lot of... Uh, uh, opportunities for business. Please know that the largest producer of wine in Central and Eastern Europe is from Moldova and it is a very good asset on the Bucharest Stock Exchange. One of the largest software producers in uh, Eastern Europe is from Moldova and is a very good performer on the New York Stock Exchange. So Moldova has talent, Moldova has opportunities, Moldova has uh, a lot of uh, innovation in the pharmaceuticals, in IT, in electronics, in wine uh, industries. Moldova uh, is uh, open for business and open for long-term capital to take these uh, opportunities. Moldova is open for business. Let me finish on the positive note and talk about more concrete stuff like business and economy. Hopefully the political issues will resolve as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Prime Minister, for speaking Thank to you. us on TRT World. Thank, Thank you. you.